Hey traders, it's John Fortune here of this week's weekly Forex forecast. I hope you're having a great weekend. Let's kick off with the DXY as we usually do. And you can see here that we're starting on the monthly chart. Although we don't usually look at the monthly chart in the weekly Forex forecast, the monthly chart, the weekly chart, the bigger time frames are always analyzed before we drop down to the four hours and then present it in the weekly Forex forecast. And in last week's video, I highlighted the fact it looked like in the monthly chart, we were doing an A, a B and a C. And it looked like we were coming close towards the end of that C wave in the DXY. So what does that mean? It means that there is a risk of a reversal to the downside. Although for those of you watching last week, you will know that I was looking for one more move to the upside first in the DXY on the lower time frames, And we'll discuss that more when we drop down to the four hour chart. But the first thing to note is last week, we actually closed the month back inside the previous candle. This is a very bearish close for the DXY. And if we add on to this, the fundamental data that came out last week, which was a big miss in the non-farm payrolls data. This provides a fundamental after looking at the technical reason to be bearish going into the DXY this week. This also provides that fundamental driver where because the economy is stalling out, the Fed are likely to delay tapering. And as a result, this is going to be bearish for the DXY as tapering is delayed as interest rate rises are pushed back. And of course, interest rate rises and tapering are two different things. But first comes the tapering, then the interest rate decisions. And all of that is likely to be pushed back whilst the economy is stuttering so as not to drive it into a recession by tapering or hiking too early. Now, for those of you who follow the forecast regularly, you will know, although we've been grinding to the upside pretty much all year in the DXY, my overall long term target is and has been the 8846. And now with the technicals aligning with the fundamentals, i.e. that big miss in the non-farm payrolls data. I do think this is probably the top in the DXY for the time being. And I do think we're going to make a meaningful run now down to the 8846, which has been the long term target here in the weekly forecast for the DXY. So if we drop down to the four hour chart, you can see that last week we broke this low, which was highlighted as the line in the sand that if we started to break here, we would be developing a near term head and shoulders. We do not have the right shoulder yet. I wouldn't be surprised to see this pulling back and correcting somewhat before selling off. But last week we broke down below this level and you can see I was looking for this pullback for potentially a breakout in this area and one more high because of the momentum which we had driving this price to the upside. Very often when you get a reversal, you can see you struggle to break the highs, 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 and then you sell off. It's not too often that you have a big momentum rally to the upside and then you just decline to the downside. It does happen. It looks like this happened last week, but that was the reason I was looking potentially for one more high last week in the DXY before we started to roll over and start the next leg to the downside in the DXY. So very simply put, going into this week, I do have a bearish bias on the DXY and I do favor dollar short positions. What I would like to see, because we've had quite a steep pullback and it looks like there's no right shoulder for the time being, any pullback in this market will be viewed as an opportunity to look for further declines down to the next key of support to the downside the target set at the 91.80. And what's very interesting and the reason why we've zoomed out here is because if you look down on the left hand side, there really is nothing but air between the 91.80 and the 90.62. So if we do break the 91.80, we could be coming down very sharply, just as we saw we rallied above the 90.62 into the 91.80 very quickly. We could very well be seeing the same to the downside once we break the 91.80. So just something to bear in mind in the DXY once we start to break below the 91.80. Next is Euro dollar. Now, last week we saw Euro dollar rallying inversely to what we saw that sell off in the DXY. And going into this week, I do have a bullish bias on Euro dollar. I think this is a good market. Any pullback in this market as we're right at the highs here is going to be viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish reversals. I'm going to be looking up towards the next key of resistance, the upside of the target set at the 1.1985. Next is New Zealand dollar. Now, New Zealand dollar is next because the New Zealand dollar itself, so not New Zealand dollar versus US dollar, but the New Zealand dollar in and of itself is the strongest currency going into next week. And what this is representing in the Forex markets is a complete narrative shift to what we've seen over the last three months. In the last three months, we've been primarily focused in the weekly forecast on risk off opportunities like CAD Yen to the downside, CAD Frank to the downside, Aussie Yen to the downside, 
Aussie franc to the downside. And all of these markets had really nice sell-offs and the Aussie, the New Zealand and also the Canadian dollar were suffering the most, those commodity currencies, as we saw the DXY grinding higher in that correction. Well, last week for the first week, really since June, we've seen that completely reverse. We have the commodity currencies overperforming and not just in a corrective sense, but they are actually stronger than a number of the other currencies like the pound, like the euro. So this is an indication again that what we saw last week in the DXY is not just a near term sell off, but is a bigger top and a bigger narrative shift in the forex markets. So as a result, New Zealand dollar is my favorite currency going into next week. Any pullback in this market is going to be viewed as an opportunity to start to look for long positions and any breakouts higher. I'm going to be looking up towards the next key resistance, the upside in the target set at 0.7265. Next is Aussie dollar. Now Aussie dollar with the break higher last week is starting to develop an inverse head and shoulders. But I'd like to see going into this week is any pullback in this market will be viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish setups up towards the next key resistance, the upside in the target set at the 0 0.7530. Pound dollar. Now pound dollar also reversed to the upside. However, you can see the reversal was not as volatile as we saw in Aussie as New Zealand. So I favor those commodity currencies going into next week. But any pullback in pound dollar will be viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish setups into the next gear resistance, the upside at the 1.3980. Next is US dollar Swiss franc. Now US dollar Swiss franc is quite choppy and you can see this is because there's two safe haven currencies, the US dollar and the Swiss franc paired against each other. So it's not performing as well as the Aussie and New Zealand when you get that kind of reflationary move, which is exactly what we saw last week. Now, I don't think the economy itself is in reflation. However, that was the type of Forex moves we saw last week with the commodity currencies outperforming. Going into next week, any pullback in this market, although again, I favor the commodity currencies, but any pullback will be viewed as an opportunity to look for bearish reversals down to the next key of support to the downside in the target set at 0 0.9011. Next is crude oil. Now, as we sold off in the DXY, we are essentially doing the inverse here as the sell off in the DXY supports higher crude oil prices. It looks like we still have a right shoulder to develop. So going into next week, any pullback in this market is simply viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish reversals up towards the next key resistance, the upside in the target set and the 72.42. So remember, it's not just the commodity currencies that benefit from a sell off in the DXY. It's also going to support commodities as well as risk assets like stocks. If we do get that sell off towards the 88.46 in the DXY now after last week. Next is US dollar CAD. Now US dollar CAD also reversed to the downside last week and we started to break below these lows over here, this contraction, this consolidation period with momentum. So any pullback in this market, and I wouldn't be surprised to see us retesting these lows, any pullback will be viewed next week as an opportunity to look for this bear flag setup and any break lower, I will be looking for further declines down to the next Kiev support to the downside in the target set at the 1.2421. Next is New Zealand Yen. Now in line with those reflationary or inflationary setups that we're now looking at in the weekly Forex forecast after the reversal last week, we're right at the top here, but I do like New Zealand Yen for further advances. So what I would like to see is any pullback in this market next week is going to be viewed as an opportunity to start to look for bullish reversals. I'm going to be looking up towards the next key of resistance, the upside in the target set at the 79.24. Next is New Zealand Franc. So this is the strongest commodity currency going into next week versus another risk off asset. We are right at the top after the big rally. And what I would like to see is come down and start to form this right shoulder here. So any pullback, it doesn't have to come all the way down to this area, especially being this strong. But any pullback in this market is going to be viewed as the opportunity to start to look for bullish reversals up towards the next key resistance, the upside of the target set, the 0 0.6628. Next is Aussie Yen. Now with that rally last week, what I would like to see, very similar to a lot of the markets we're looking at here because of how the DXY is setting up, so the sell off and then the potential right shoulder forming, any pullback in this market would be viewed as an opportunity to start to look for the right shoulder here of this inverse head and shoulders. And if we start to pull back and then start to reverse the upside, we start to break out higher, 
any bullish reversal is going to be viewed as an opportunity to look for long positions into the next gear of resistance, the upside at the 82.80. Next is Aussie Frank. Now, Aussie Frank was actually a market we were looking to the downside last week and we just pulled back and we started to correct. And interestingly, you can see there was no break lower. There was no reversal here. So if you were looking for bearish reversals in this market, you didn't get one and it would have just kept you out of trading this market completely last week as the market reversed. So looking for bullish and bearish reversals will filter out many positions which are just going to reverse against you because there will be none. It will just reverse to the upside like this. But going into this week, we're also sitting at this potential inverse head and shoulder setup. I would like to see a pullback first, especially as we had none all the way up to making new highs over here. So any pullback in this market is going to be viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish reversals up to the next key of resistance, the upside and the target set, the 0 0.6899. Next is SPX. Now, last week we came up and took out the target of the 4526.97 that we had set in the SPX. And something to talk about in terms of stocks is if we go and have a look at the stock market since the 2020 crash, you can see, and we're looking at a weekly chart here, that this thing has just gone vertical. I mean, it's just gone bananas. And when you look at the jobs report coming out of the US last week, you can see the markets and risk assets are completely detached from reality. They are completely dislocated from the underlying fundamentals. And when you have a market or an asset which is completely dislocated or detached from the fundamentals, it's called a bubble. This is what a bubble is. So there's no doubt in my mind that the stock market in the US is in a bubble. But the market last week, especially the Forex markets, made a statement, which is that despite the fact the stock market is in a bubble, the Fed is going to have no choice but to delay tapering, to delay the raising of interest rates. And this is going to add to inflationary pressures. And as we see inflation picking up, we'll see commodities rising. We see commodity currencies rising. And a weaker dollar is going to see a continuation to the upside in risk assets for the time being. So although we've been trading this to the upside, I am aware that US stock markets are in a bubble and I want you guys to understand that as well. The question is how long can the bubble last? And if the DXY is going to sell off to the downside as we looked at earlier in the video and the Fed is as the markets believe and stated last week that the Fed is going to delay tapering and rate hikes, then this is likely to see risk assets moving even higher from the levels we're currently at. But if you're trading stocks and if you're running a portfolio, make sure you're keeping your eye on the VIX and you're prepared to hedge with shorts, with puts, whatever you want, if signs that the bubble is starting to pop do materialize. So going into next week, any pullback in SPX, I will be looking for bullish reversals in this market and any bullish reversals, I'm going to be looking up towards the next target to the upside, which we set at the 4598.55. Next is the Russell. Now, in previous videos, I highlighted the fact that the Russell tends to lead markets like the S&P 500 because of its cyclical nature. It's made up of more cyclical small cap stocks. And I noted in previous videos that we were forming a head and shoulders, which would be confirmed on a break below this level down here at the 2107. And if the Russell were to break lower, this could be an early sign that the stock market was likely to correct and a correction was to follow or even a crash. And instead, we failed to come down and break the confirmation point and we reversed and rallied higher. And this is a major break to the upside after this consolidation period. And it seems strange to say it because of what we just discussed with equities in the US, especially looking like they're in a bubble. But this is actually the start potentially of a much bigger move to the upside in the Russell, the way this is structured. So although the US economy itself is stuttering, the Russell is potentially setting up for a bigger move to the upside. So any pullback in the Russell next week is going to be viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish reversals. And we're going to be looking up towards the next key of resistance, the upside and the target set at the 2370.51. Next is the NASDAQ. Now I've been bullish on the NASDAQ and we came very close to the target set in the NASDAQ. And I'd like to see one of two things going into next week. If we start to pull back, any pullback in this market will be viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish reversals up towards the target set in the NASDAQ at the 15796.91. Or if we take out this target first and then pull back, we're going to be looking up towards target two at the 16161.25. 
Next is the Dow Jones. Now I go into next week with the bullish bias on the Dow Jones. That would change if we came and broke this level here as this would confirm a head and shoulders top in the Dow Jones. But as it stands, this market is currently bullish. We have started to correct. So what I'd like to see is any pullback in this market would be viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish reversals up towards the next target to the upside at the 36066.23. Next is the Nifty. Now the Nifty has been on an absolute tear and ever since we broke out of this sideways consolidation, I have been bullish on the Nifty and we've been looking for further advances to the upside. We did take out both targets and we finally finished at the second target in the Nifty at the 17276.90. So going into this week, I am bullish on this market once again. Any pullback, and I would like to see a pullback first, but any pullback in this market is viewed as an opportunity to once again look for bullish setups up towards the next key target to the upside at the 17521.20. Next is gold. Now, gold is an extremely interesting market to me going into next week and in the near future, because if you remember in last week's video, I was actually bullish technically on gold, but I didn't want to take any positions in it. All the while, the DXY hadn't reversed and I wanted to see maybe one more up move in the DXY, then a reversal, and then I'd be interested in gold. Well, we got the reversal in DXY last week and we saw risk on reflationary or inflationary setups across the foreign exchange markets and this paves the way for further upside in gold and i do think we could see some explosive moves in gold to the upside in the near future if the dollar is going to sell off and it's going to start to come down to the 8846 so very interested in gold and silver as the dollar declines if we do get that dollar decline like it looks like we will and last week, we almost took out the targets at the 1834.12. We missed it just by a couple of points. So any pullback in this market, and I'd first like to see it take out this target, and any pullback in this market will be viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish reversals up to the next key of resistance, the upside of the target set at the 1869.36. Next is silver. Now, last week, I was bullish on silver, just like gold, technically speaking, and we did come up and take out the target set at the 24.490. Just as with gold, I do think we could start to see some bigger moves up in silver as well and also some of the other commodities. And if you look at the charts here, we had a really strong break higher with momentum above this small area of consolidation. And this is pointing to higher highs in this market next week. And if the dollar's declining, very much like with gold, this is going to see silver prices rising. So very interested in silver again next week and possibly over the next month or so. Any pullback in this market is going to be viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish reversals up towards the next key of resistance, the upside of the target set, the 25.60. Now, I will keep you updated on my Twitter of gold and silver. And if we start to look like we're going to get a bigger breakout and a bigger move to the upside in these markets, I will post that for you on Twitter during the week if that's when it transpires. And last but not least, we have Bitcoin. Now, I have been bullish on Bitcoin, despite the fact that we've been grinding to the upside in the DXY and we have been moving to the upside. Well, last week with the DXY selling off, this does clear the way for Bitcoin to move higher as well. We have been looking at the 52.911 and we've been taking out multiple targets to the upside. It's actually been a very good performing market in the weekly forecast. And going into this week, with that sell off in the DXY, as I say, I see no reason for Bitcoin not moving higher this week. So any pullback in this market would be viewed as the opportunity to look for bullish reversals up towards the next key of resistance, the upside and the target highlighted from last week at the 52,911. So that is it for me for this week, guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please let me know by liking, sharing and subscribing. A big thank you to everybody who does that on a regular basis and a big thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel so far. I want to wish you all a fantastic weekend and I want to wish you all the best in your trading next week. The only thing left to say is take care and don't forget to trade safely.